In 2008, the Nobel Prize in Chemistry was awarded to three scientists for the discovery and development of the green fluorescent protein, GFP. Scientist number one was Osamu Shimomura. He was a marine biologist from Japan and was the first to isolate green fluorescent protein from a jellyfish called Aquaria victoria. This was in 1962. He not only isolated the protein from this interesting jellyfish, he figured out the mechanism of the jellyfish's fluorescence. The protein that gives it its cool green fluorescent color is actually uh, an interesting three-dimensional structure called a beta-can structure. So the protein itself is shaped like a cylinder. And in this picture, the ribbons that we see here are actually strands of amino acids that are folding into that cylindrical shape surrounding a set of three amino acids in the center that make up the part of the protein called the chromophore. The chromophore absorbs blue light or ultraviolet light, and it emits green light. So in the jellyfish, when ultraviolet light is, is absorbed by the chromophore of this particular protein, there's a flash of green light. Dr. Shimomura figured out that there was another protein involved in the fluorescence of the jellyfish called a quarin, which most of the time is inactive, but can be activated by the intake of calcium ions from the ocean water uh, when there's a touch to the outside of the jellyfish, maybe from a predator. Uh, that calcium ion activates the aquarin, and aquarin, when it's in, a, in its excited state, emits blue light or ultraviolet light. That ultraviolet light is emitted to the GFP protein, which then emits green light. So blue light goes in, green light comes out. What we can do now is use GFP in research uh, as a tag or a marker, which we'll discuss in a moment, and in a laboratory setting, all we need to do is supply the blue light in the form of uh, a black light. And we can make that protein fluoresce bright green just like it does in the jellyfish. So let's get to tagging. Scientist number two was Martin Chalfie, who is a scientist at Columbia University here in New York. Beside his portrait, you'll see a picture of the cover of Science, a journal uh, that is very prominent in the field of well, in all of science, on the photograph of this particular cover of science is that the organism that Martin Chalfie works with in his research. It's a microscopic roundworm called C. elegans. And you'll see in the picture, it's fluorescing. He was able to figure out how to use GFP as a genetic tag or marker in these little transparent C. elegans worms. I'll show you what Martin Chalfie figured out. So in molecular biology and genetics, one of the major questions to be answered is, uh, how do genes code for proteins and what do these proteins do? So we know genes are stretches of DNA with a coded set of base pairs that tell ribosomes how to make a protein that has a, an interesting three-dimensional shape and a function inside the cell of a living thing. Proteins though are somewhat invisible. They don't have color, uh, so visualizing them can be very difficult. Martin Chalfie figured out how to use GFP to visualize proteins of interest. Here's how. All you need to do is insert the jellyfish gene, the gene for GFP, right beside the gene that codes for the protein that you're studying. What that means is that every time your protein of interest is being produced, GFP is also. And now this protein is tagged. Everywhere your protein goes, it will glow and all you need to see it is a black light. This is called using GFP as a tracer. It's also sometimes called tagging proteins or tagging genes. And this is all possible because of this very simple protein from a jellyfish. Pretty amazing. Now we can see where proteins are going inside cells by tagging them. We can see when they're being made, meaning when the gene is being expressed inside the life of a cell. We can even make different cells fluoresce different colors. I'll show you that in a moment. But here's an example of the use of GFP as a reporter. When it's inside a cell, we know that it's there because it glows, right? So this is a photograph of a few little mice pups and three of them are fluorescing bright green while three of them are not. The fluorescent mice were genetically engineered at a very early stage in development so that the GFP gene would be passed to every cell in the mouse's body. The mice in the center that are brown are controls so we can see a difference between them for sure and the genetically engineered mice. 
experiments like this are very useful in showing that we are able to genetically engineer complex multicellular living things, animals that are related to humans. And the idea is that if we can engineer a mouse in this way before it's fully developed, that odds are techniques like that could potentially be used on humans, not to make them glow, but maybe someday to prevent debilitating genetic disease simply by replacing faulty genes. Here's how the GFP gene can be used to track cancer cells. You can tag a gene like this one that turns a healthy cell into a cancer cell very quickly with the GFP gene. And inside a mouse, everywhere that cancer gene is active, that cell is going to glow. So we have a mouse here laying on its stomach. Its head is up here, tail down here. And everywhere you see this fluorescence uh, is where we have groups of cancer cells or tumors growing in the mouse's body. Beside it is a control mouse that doesn't have any cancer cells. There's a clear difference. But this allows us to visualize the cancer inside this mouse's body simply by anesthetizing it for a few minutes and using ultraviolet light to illuminate the cancer. We can see if it's growing, if it's spreading, if it's responding to treatment in a much easier way. The third scientist who received the Nobel Prize in 2008 was Roger Sien. In his lab, they were able to develop variants of GFP simply by modifying the gene slightly, which affected the protein structure slightly, allows the protein itself to emit different colors. Right beside the portrait of Roger Sien is a picture of a Petri dish. And this is all bacteria on the dish. Someone put fluorescent genetically engineered bacteria onto an instrument and used the bacteria like paint to write these letters and these dots. So we can see a few different colors here. And here's a whole rainbow of colors. So these are all variants of GFP created in the Sien lab. And here's another beautiful example of how these fluorescent bacteria that were engineered with variants of the GFP gene can be used like paint. But is this why the Sien lab made variants of GFP? It's one very special outcome, but here's a better example of how this is useful in research. So here's a photograph of neurons in tissue. And the neurons are all tagged with variants of GFP. I can tell one cell from the next. I can tell if cells are related by the fact that they share colors. So having variants allows me to see many different cells or maybe track a, several different proteins all at the same time and simply use color to tell one from the next. Who would have thought that a simple jellyfish protein discovered in 1962 would have such an impact on molecular biology. It just goes to show that sometimes what seem like the simplest of discoveries turn out to be the most exciting. <laughs>